Hey guys, Tutor Titan here. Hope all is well with you. This is going to be our first math help video to the channel, and we wanted to start off with something more common that you'd see in high school math, especially in grade 11 and 12, and that's going to be the discussion around quadratics. Okay, and first off, we know that quadratics always give us some sort of shape on the graph that looks like this, okay? And we'll call this a parabola, right? And it could be opening down like you see here, or opening up, okay? So I'll draw that out for you. And another way to think about this is gonna be the standard form equation, okay? And this is kinda the format that these quadratic formulas sort of follow, okay? And as you can see here, there's this x squared, okay? And that's our highest sort of exponent on the x in the equation. And if you see that, that means you're, you're gonna get this quadratic shape, okay? But that's not gonna be the focus today on, a, on exactly the specifics of this entire equation. But we're actually gonna focus on going from this form, standard form they call it, to factored form. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out for you here. Okay, and a lot of you are gonna be wondering like, why the heck is this so important in math, right? And the reason for it is because the factored form is actually gonna give us the x-intercepts on the graph, right? And x-intercepts are referring to these coordinates here, okay? Right where it intersects on the axis there, okay? And the pieces of that factored form equation that are actually gonna give us that are these guys here in the brackets, okay? So now I'm sure you guys wanna see this in action. So let's start off with sort of a demo equation here. And that's going to be 4x squared minus 6x minus 4. And then equals y here. Okay. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit so we can see a bit better. And <clears throat> the first thing we want to look at here is, is there a number that sort of is divisible into all of these numbers we see here? And if you're thinking the same thing as me, I see that a 2 can squeeze in all these numbers, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna factor out a two, right? And when we're factoring, we're essentially just dividing that two from the original numbers we had, right? So four divide two is two, six divide two is negative three x, and then negative four divide two is then negative two, okay? And now we're kind of getting one step closer to that factored format that we're looking for. Okay, and the next piece to this is we're going to do something called the sum product rule. Okay, and this is kind of one of the most common methods your teachers will show you, but at first it can be a little bit confusing. I'm going to try and explain it in the best way possible here. Okay, but we call it the sum product because there's going to be two numbers that multiply to make negative four and add to make negative three. Okay. And you see we got a product and a sum condition, okay? And essentially, we're looking for two numbers that satisfy these conditions in both scenarios, okay? So it has to multiply to make negative 4, and those two numbers also have to add to make negative 3. And you guys are probably wondering, like, where the heck am I getting these numbers, right? So that negative 4 is actually coming from multiplying the a term there, the 2, by the constant or the c term, right? 2 times negative 2, negative 4, okay? And then this add 1 with the negative 3, that's always going to be this middle term here every time, okay? And <clears throat> some of you might have already figured out what these two numbers are right off the jump. However, <clears throat> when you're first learning this, it might help you to think of all the factors of negative 4 first, okay? So we know that 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. We know that negative 4 times 1 is going to be, sorry, <clears throat> 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, right? So those are all the possible factors of negative 4, right? And if you're looking here, do any of those numbers appear to be 3 apart, right? And 1 and 4 are kind of 3 numbers apart, right? So let's test them out. Okay, let's try 1 and negative 4. That multiplies to make negative 4. Does it work here? It does, right? 1 plus negative 4 
is negative three, okay? So these are actually gonna be our special numbers that are gonna help us complete this and get it to factored form, okay? So the next step is gonna be to separate this B value, okay? And I'll show you guys what I mean here. So I'll just write it out first. Everything's gonna stay the same except for that guy there, okay? And I'm gonna put minus four X plus one X minus two, okay? And you'll see that that negative three X is now two separate terms here. It's now negative four and plus one, right? If we did this in reverse, they would just collect to make that negative three anyways, okay? But that's just gonna reverse our factoring, so we're not gonna do that, okay? And now the next step is to look at both sides of the equation here, right? So we got a two X squared minus four X and a one X minus two. And we're gonna look for the greatest common factors in those pairs, okay? And <clears throat> if you can see there, there's a two that fits into that first pair and an X, right? So that's again, our, one of our greater common factors that we're gonna take out. So I'm gonna double bracket here, take out two X. And then what's left over in there is that we have to now divide that by what was originally there. So that's gonna be two X squared, divide two X which is gonna give us just x, and then negative four x divide two x, that's just gonna be two, okay? And then we look at the other pair, okay? That one x minus two. Nothing we can really see fits in there. However, a one always is divisible, right? So we're actually gonna take out a one, okay? And then what's left over is just what was there before, because anything divide one's the same thing, so that's just the x minus two. And if you do this correctly, these two terms in the bracket should be the same, right? And we got the X minus two, so that's very good, okay? And then the last step with this whole factoring thing is you actually factor these two guys out. Because they're the same term, they're actually both divisible in those, right? So we could divide both sides by X minus two, right? So we're gonna factor that out again so we take out x minus two, and what's left over is this two x plus one. And there we go, we have factored form now, okay? Now, let's just think of this on a graph and how we would find our x-intercepts, because remember, that's the whole point of this, okay? And we know that at the x-intercept, okay, if you think about coordinates, my y value is always gonna be equal to zero, right? So since we know that, we can actually sub that right into the equation. So I'm gonna plug it in. Okay. So now we know that there's some sort of number that we could substitute in for x that's actually gonna zero out this whole equation. And we know that anything times zero is gonna be zero. So we can actually look at our factors separately, okay? And assess it that way. So we know that zero equals x minus two, okay? So that means algebraically, if we're solving for x, we move the two over, and we get two equals x. And then we can do the same thing for the two x plus one. Move the negative, or move the one over, we get negative one. And then to solve for x, we then divide by two, and we get x is equal to negative one over two. Okay, and if you're trying to picture this on a graph, these are now the coordinates, right? We have two and zero, and negative one half and zero, right? And if we were to just think about that on a graph, that would look something like this, right? There's our, our y-axis and our x-axis, right? Here, y is zero, because it's right on the axis. And then you could call that negative half, and you could call this two, okay? All right, guys, that's my uh, little demonstration on how to go from standard form to factored form. I hope that was some help, and there's going to be more videos to come on a lot of different math topics. Thank you. Bye-bye.